Alrighty, so it's been a couple of days since the two episode premiere of The Acolyte Season 1 and it's already off to a terrible start, in fact a historic moment within Star Wars under Disney's wing. It is by far the most universally rejected Star Wars project to date and that really reveals a lot of things about the current status of the fandom. Now you have of course the media blaming, you know, reviews not being anywhere near to reality or anything related to it in that sense and blaming of course fans that are just doing it at a spot which is not true. A lot of fans are being very honest about their feelings about the Acolytes so far. It's not just Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb. You go anywhere on social media, you see all of that, of course, reflecting on its own. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you are new and like this video to see future updates. You can also follow me at Mike Zero One. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. So I want you guys to remember the name Amandla Stenberg, not Amanda, but Amandla. Yeah, I've never heard of that name either, but that's what the main actress, of course, is in the Acolyte series who plays both May and Osha, the twin sisters, the evil and the good twin. Very, um, you know, lackluster plotline there and, and as far as I see things, but focusing on Amandla Stember, she has been endlessly defending and attacking the fandom to no end, and it really makes you wonder, these are the types of people that Lucasfilm hire. These are the people that Kathleen Kennedy tends to hire. Those like Leslie Headland, for example, Harvey Weinstein's former personal assistant. And yes, this needs to be known to everyone, that these are the types of people that Lucasfilm allows in their workplace, in their working environment, and who they are allowed to represent, right? So what's interesting about this has a lot to do with what Amandla Stenberg had to say about the ratings disaster of the Acolyte series. Let's get into it. Now with the Acolyte ratings disaster already the worst performing Lucasfilm project since Disney took over back in 2012, one major development now has much to do with actress Amandla Stenberg, who went on to, of course, desperate damage control to defend the Acolyte series like never before. This comes shortly after the media blamed review bombing was the cause of the ratings disaster for the Acolyte. Stenberg delivered the following. Many people like to say that the LGBTQ community is such a minority, especially for those that watch Star Wars. And the typical fans that say that are just flat out dead wrong. The LGBTQ community is very large and closer to a majority of the fans that tune into this franchise. I mean, there are different spectrums, you know. Some are questioning themselves and others know their place in this, in this world. But we are all expecting, of course, so many fanboys to get upset with this series. I knew going into this show that the fanboys were going to reject it and place their narrative in any way possible. Look, I don't trust any of the reviews or the reactions yet. I mean, sure, some are authentic, but the majority majority of the reviews I have seen are obviously just not authentic at all and are coming from a place of fans who believe that Star Wars can't change and can't adapt to representation and diversity in a series like this. They are obviously afraid of us normalizing that in a mega brand like Star Wars. As one who got the chance to play Mei and Osha, they really in many ways have better qualities than Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. And by the end of the series, I think all the haters are going to feel ashamed at how wrong they were about the series. We have so many twists and turns that it's going to make The Empire Strikes Back look like absolute nothing at all. Now, let me just stop here for one moment because based on what she's saying, she believes Amandla Stenberg that The Acolyte is going to outperform The Empire Strikes Back. Well, she's in for something, let me just say that. Continuing on. Many like to call out LGBTQ representation as an agenda, she says, are just crazy. They have no clue what they are talking about at all and don't even understand what Star Wars even is. It has nothing to do with George's vision of what objects and planets you see in the brand. It's about adapting to modern times, and we are seeing spike after spike of those in the LGBTQ community, so it was very important to me and Leslie Headland that we would make that a big part moving on from episode 2 till the end of the season. I think this community will be very happy with the third episode, and how Leslie sees the world, and how it really needs fixing as well. Look, I'm non-binary, so it was also an honor to see her place character
characters in there that represent my community. Those that claim non-binary isn't real just don't get it. Go and look it up. We exist and the numbers are growing. I couldn't be any more happier for this series. Of course, it's going to make diehard fans cry because they aren't going to get exactly what they want, but both Leslie and I made sure that going into all of the episodes that representation, of course, is the key to supporting many communities that we paid respect to would be a progressive experience throughout the season. So let me just say one thing, guys, all right, before I move on from what a manla stemberg is just spewing out of her mouth all the time now again we know that leslie headland and basically a manla stemberg i feel are more extreme than kathleen kennedy all right when it comes to how vocal they are when it comes to the things that they say i mean we all saw how they are they got into the mainstream media guys i mean that's how bad the acolyte situation really is it is in the mainstream media sure Ahsoka, you know, had some criticism, but it never ever got into the mainstream media like that. This is different because this is universally rejected. Almost everyone hates the Acolyte series. Now look, you're going to have an exception. You're going to have a small percentage of fans that love this show through and through, that they are raving about it from episode to episode. And these are the types of people, by the way, that are not going to make up their mind. If you like it, you like it. That's fine. That's your thing. Let me just make that clear, guys. If you like the show, that's your thing. I'm not going to ridicule you, you about that, but that's your thing. That's not my thing, and I, however, have a far different opinion than yours. That's where I stand. So again, I mean, Leslie Headland and Amanda Stenberg have done the worst damage in history. I think that this is the end of the franchise. We all know what's about to happen in episode three. Even a manless Stenberg is uh, alluding to all of what's going on in the drastic episode for June 12th, this Wednesday. Again, I keep saying this, mark your calendars. It's gonna be a big one and not in a good way. Moving on, she goes on to conclude. Episode three really kicks things off with that and it's going to be such a big moment in Star Wars, not just for me, but for the new fans that Leslie is aiming for. Kathy also agreed with us on this approach that it shouldn't be about old fans anymore, but about the reviews. All I can say is I think that they are not necessarily real and nowhere near close to the majority of fans. Look, let me just say one thing about Amanda Stenberg. Either she is so out of touch with reality that she believes every word that she's saying, or she is literally just saying this to kind of tick off fans on purpose. It's one or the other, or maybe even a combination of both, I don't know. But focusing on everything here going on with the Acolyte, this is, and I've been talking about this for well over a year, if you guys have been following us here for a while, I've been talking about this for over a year, that this was, that this was destined to be a disaster. Solely because she looked up to Ryan Johnson, she looked up to The Last Jedi, it's why I always like to call it The Last Jedi 2.0, or The Hackalite. The Hackalite. Because we all know that what Ryan Johnson really is when it comes to Star Wars, right? He destroyed Luke, he destroyed George's philosophy, he destroyed the concept of the Jedi, everything. And when you go into Leslie Headland, she literally is Ryan Johnson 2.0. She is like, you know, one that really took all of his ways of filmmaking. You guys will notice if you look very carefully in the Acolyte, there are a lot of stolen concepts from other films. So abundantly clear. For example, we have unfinished business, like Beatrix Kiddo in Kill Bill. Just pure cringe. But overall, guys, I would love to hear what you all have to say about this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. And I will catch you guys later. Yeah.